smartphones, drones, electric cars, all made possible by the marvel of the lithium-iron batteries. The scientists had to work very hard to achieve the high energy density we see today. One tool they used for this was Raman microscopy, and today I want to show you how they applied this. This little thing has revolutionized the way we store and access energy throughout the world. Before we start exploring the role of Raman microscopy, let's look at the way a lithium-iron battery works and what happens during charge and discharge. Keep in mind that this is really simplified, but basically we need two electrodes, one consisting of graphite and the other made from a metal oxide. But where is the lithium? That depends on whether the battery is charged or discharged. If the battery is already discharged, the lithium resides in the metal oxide. Now, when we apply a current and the battery charges, the lithium migrates through the electrolyte into the graphite, a process that is called intercalation. If the battery is charged and we are using it, the lithium is released from the graphite and migrate into the metal oxide. Now, wouldn't it be great if we could watch what's happening in the real time and learn about the chemical processes? Fortunately, Brahman can do it, even non-invasively and non-destructively, just by looking at the graphite electrode. On the molecular level, graphite displays a sheath-like carbon structure. During insertion, the lithium ions distort the sheath and deform the structure. Then, when the lithium is released, this process is reversed and the graphite returns to its sheath-like state. This structural change can be monitored by Raman spectroscopy. Let's take a closer look at how this works. You should know that Raman microscopy is the tool to investigate the structure of carbon and its allotropes. In a Raman spectrum of graphite, you can see two dominating vibrational bands, the D band corresponding to out-of-plane vibrations and the G band indicating the in-plane vibration of sp2 carbon. Therefore, the dg ratio is telling us the structure of the carbon materials. By studying this closely, we can learn a lot about the chemical processes and structural changes in graphite. Currently, scientists are debating how lithium intercalation happens, and maybe such experiment can help determine the actual mechanism. But how do scientists do that? The setup is quite simple, actually. Of course, you need a lab and, for example, a glove box to handle the very sensitive material that are used in modern lithium-iron battery. But besides that, you basically only need a good Raman microscope and an electrochemical cell like this one right here. The so-called air cell features a glass window that allows the Raman microscope's laser to peek into the cell while the chemistry happens. It is of course airtight and comes with electrode to connect it to an emitter so you can follow the change of the charge. This cell is prepared and simply put into the Centera 2 Raman microscope. It is continuously calibrated, allowing you to start very sensitive experiment at your convenience without need to calibrate it beforehand. The calibration is very important. You will see this immediately when we look at some real-life spectroscopic data. This measurement was done by S. Javanovic from IEK9 Research Center in Ulis, Germany. As the voltage goes down, the charge taken increases until voltage ultimately drops to zero. On the left, you can follow the Raman spectral change over time as the voltage decreases. At first, the G-band is broad and split, but slowly it shifts converge, and finally forms a sharp and strong Raman peak. Such crucial details are only accessible with a well-calibrated Raman device. Following the spectral change, we can observe that after discharge, the graphite structure has been fully recovered. OK, let's summarize what we learned. Raman microscopy yields countless information about carbon, its electrodes, and of course, graphite electrodes used in lithium-iron batteries. We can follow the processes that happen inside the battery in real time if we have the fitting equipment like air cell and Centera 2 microscope. And we can access vital additional information by using a device with a continuous calibration, making our analysis better and comprehensive. But Raman can go beyond that. It can look at every part of a battery, including electrodes, electrolytes, interfaces, and films. The take-home message is, 
the Raman microscopy and battery research go hand in hand. So thank you for watching and see you next one.